finishing up talking about Pascal's triangle and how that associates the binomial theorem, and then moving on to continuing with advanced counting techniques, and in particular uh, using recurrence relations. So for the binomial theorem, which is this line right here, where I have the sum of two objects to the nth power, we can talk about this as a counting problem where uh, we're going to be taking n objects uh, at a time, and of the types, you could take, so for the very first type here, uh, we're going to have n squares and no triangles, which means that in terms of counting, we'd have n factorial uh, arrangements total, but they're all the same, so there's 0 factorial of these and n factorial of those, so it's just the choice function. The other possibility is to choose one triangle and the rest square, so there'd be n choose one combinations. Or we continue. Essentially what we're taking is j triangles, n minus j squares, n choose j would be the coefficient, until finally we've taken all triangles and no squares. One of the things that we proved previously was Pascal's identity, and you can prove this either algebraically or through a combinatorical proof, which was the idea of n plus 1 choose k is the same as n choose k minus 1 plus n choose k. If you look at this, what this is just doing is that the sum of, if this would be a 2, and that would be a 2, and then if I let uh, k be 2, and then that would be a 1, and then that would be a 2, and that would be a 3. And so 3 choose 2 is the same thing as 2 choose 1 plus 2 choose 2 sums up to 3 choose 2. So what's happening on this is we can use Pascal's identity to form all of the coefficients of a binomial expansion. And by having, if we would look at this in terms of any of the powers, you start off with choose 0, choose 1, up to choose n. So if we start off with 0, it's just 0, choose 0. If it's 1, it's 1, choose 0, 1, choose 1. And if it's 2, n choose 0, n, sorry, 2, choose 0, 2, choose 1, 2, choose 2, all up to, say, 4. 4, choose 0, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, choose 3, 4, choose 4. And so each of these would be, you know, a formula. And I could go through this and say, oh, look, you know, 4, choose 3 is 4 factorial over 3 factorial, 1 factorial. Simplify this thing all down and say 4 choose 2 is 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial. But in the end, by using Pascal's identity, I could just write this triangle where I just simply build it 1, 1, 1, and then everybody below is just the sum of the two above on the internal structures. And so then I could get to the same solutions of this 4 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial, is simply going to be 6. And then the 4 factorial, 3 factorial, 1 factorial would be 4 and then 1. And so you could, instead of doing the factorial notation, as long as, I mean, if it's not it's too bad in terms of making this triangle it grows, it's just summation to be able to generate all of the coefficients of a binomial expansion. And we also can use Pascal's triangle to look at some of the theorems that are within the section. We could look along the rows, and if I would go along the rows, that's a 1, that's a 2, that's a 4, that's an 8, that's a 16. We can see that every row is just 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4th. The 4th row is 2 to the 4th in terms of its sum by us going through here. And so Pascal's triangle not only uh, is going to be using Pascal's identity to generate every next row, Pascal's triangle is also useful to show us particular theorems, that the sum of 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1, 2 choose 2 is just 2 to the second power. And again, this would be like how many, and you can look at every single one of these numbers and interpret it like the idea of, where this particular theorem was, where the sum of the choose functions is 2 to a power was the uh, power, the cardinality of the power set. And so you would say 3 choose 0, how many sets are there that have nothing in them? 
would be one, it would be the empty set. How many singleton of, th of three objects? There would be three. How many duals of the three objects? There would be three. How many ways to choose three objects? There's just one. So you would look at these sums as you go across, and you could talk about the breaking down of taking nothing or one or two or three or choosing three out of three. Each of these numbers can be interpreted according to those particular theorems as we go through it. Um, one of the more interesting features of Pascal's triangle is instead of writing it like a triangle like this, where we're adding up above and going down, we use the same numbers but write them like this. And one, four, six, four, one, where these two numbers add to drop the number below. So we always start off with one. We add those two numbers to drop below. Four and six is ten. Six and four is ten. Four and one is five. And one, one, one and five is six. Five and ten is fifteen. Ten and ten is twenty. Ten and five is fifteen. Five and one is six. And one. And so again, it's still the same Pascal's triangle, but kind of interestingly on this, we could look at the diagonals of this guy by going through this. Uh, let's make it really thin, so thick. Say these diagonals here, and I'm going to go up to say this number, and write them up above and there. There and if we would write those numbers, we get that's just one on that diagonal. It's one on that diagonal. It's two on that diagonal. It is three on that diagonal. It is five on this diagonal. It is eight on this diagonal, and it is twelve, thirteen on this diagonal. And you should recognize these numbers. So. The rows of the Fibonacci numbers, as you go across them, are 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3 is what they sum up to. Summing up the diagonals of written in this form, it forms the Fibonacci numbers. So that would tell us that the Fibonacci numbers themselves show up as a choose type of problem in some sort of way as we're going along these, just like these are a question of this or this is this. Um, there would be a theorem somewhere in here that you could dig out and say that the sum of these choose functions ends up being the Fibonacci number. So that'd be the first Fibonacci number, the second, the third. So the first diagonal is the first Fibonacci number. The one, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh Fibonacci, seventh diagonal, is the seventh Fibonacci number. So it's kind of interesting. You can look at that, and there's a lot of things that show up on these. You know, interestingly enough that shows up. In terms of using Pascal's, this is just kind of, you know, just for the sake of interest. 